Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope everyone is doing well. On last Friday's episode, we did a modeling of a little gopher character. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And today we're going to change his pose. We're going to rig him and make him basically pose him into something slightly less um, robotic. And maybe we'll do a bit of animation as well. Uh, but for today's episode, I'm just going to um, stay with the rigging part because it can be quite complicated for beginners. So let's begin! So first thing that we do here is to get rid of, not well, not really getting rid of, but basically applying all of the modifiers that we have on these individual objects. Uh, so that is to prepare for combining all of these objects together, especially the ones on the head. Um, since we're not doing individual movement of these like eyes and nose, so they can just be combined into the head um, and uh, we can just do like parenting, keep transform, so they go with the head and uh, it's just easier in terms of kind of this simple character uh, movements. And now I'm just combining the hat together and uh, honestly I thought it was going to be much harder to make the flat cap because it looks like it's an odd shape uh, but no it was not, it was quite fun actually uh, and quite simple and here I have the body and I'm applying the modifiers as well and the lapel needs to be attached to the sports jacket um, and basically you need to clean up the meshes and uh, simplify things for yourself before you start rigging. Here I realised that there was uh, a part of the mesh that I really don't need it, um, so I'm just trying to clean up whatever that's unnecessary and that's sticking out before applying the modifiers. So I modeled the hand individually, as you remember from my last video, it was another cube um, that I used, but in this case, because we need to apply the bones as a whole set, so I just combined the, the hand with the body into, into one object, it's just easier for the rigging part. People that I respected saying, you know, I like your work or whatever that is. Um, I decided to remove the shoe laces and uh, the, the, the little details on the shoes later, I think, because it was not working very well with the weight painting and it was just, it was not very beginner friendly basically, so I removed them. For acting services rendered and I gave myself five years, or three years maybe, and and I dated it Thanksgiving 1995, just before Thanksgiving 1995 I found out that I was going to make and now it's time to go to um, armature, I think it's called, and go for the human bones and uh, make sure that your origin of the object is set correctly so the bones can be added to the correct position. And make sure you scale all of your bodies and heads and everything before you actually um, add the bones. And if you don't see the options under armature, then you need to go to your preferences and um, um, there is an option called Rigify, I think, and that is the rigging tool that you need. And after applying that preference, you will be able to see um, getting human bones under armature.
think at this point I was looking for a way to kind of move the bones um, kind of in front of the body. There's actually an option for that in viewpoint display. You can just check the box for in front, then you will have the bones in front of the body. And in this case, I deleted all of the bones for the facial uh, facial movement because we don't really um, need that for the simple animation. And I kept one, uh, one spine uh, for the head, which I ended up not using as well, just because I have uh, lots of accessories on the head and the way painting was not working properly. And when you try to fit the rest of the bones onto the body, make sure that you have um, the X mirroring checked. So it's just it's just much easier that way. So you do the um, when you do when you're doing the symmetrical moving of the bones. And I believe the rest of it is quite intuitive, really. Um, it's like um, high school biology again, <laughs> basically fitting um, the bones to where they should be. And uh, obviously this character is kind of a, it's a Funko style, cartoon sort of style. So the bones will be shaped, like the scales will be slightly different, but that's completely fine. You just need to fit them um, to, the, to the correct position and you'll be good. that you used to go up on Mulholland Drive and yeah, park every night. and visualize seeing yourself as... Yeah, I would visualize... Uh, yeah, I would this visualize, is when you were broke and poor. You know, right, having directors interested in me and people that I respected uh, um, saying, you know, I like your work or whatever that is. And, and uh, I would visualize things coming to me that I wanted or whatever. Drive home and think, well, I do have these things. Uh, they're out there, I just don't have a hold of them yet, but they're out there. I wrote myself a check for $10 million for acting services rendered, and I gave myself uh, five years, or three years, maybe. And, uh, and uh, I dated it Thanksgiving 1995. Just before Thanksgiving 1995, I found out that I was gonna make $10 million dollars and dollars and dollars. So once you've shaped and scaled your bones into the correct position of your character, the next thing to do is to generate a rig, as you can see I am doing here in the option menu, and make sure that you scale uh, Control A to scale your um, 
uh, your bone structure before you do that or else the, um, the rick that comes out of it is going to look weird or act weirdly and things like that so once you generated a rig it's basically going to give you this sort of like um, um, like an arrow map sort of thing underneath your character and that is your that is your final rig and you can use that to make pose for your characters and uh, the way that you do that is that you can hide the bones at this point because you don't really need them anymore but don't delete it because later on you might want to adjust um, the bones in the body or like weight and things like that so just maybe hide it in another collection or something like that and what you need to do is to actually uh, click on the body uh, of its own or maybe the the objects that's attached to it and then click the the rig itself and then set parent uh, except that you choose something different in the set parent this time which is um, amateur deform with uh, automatic weights so that's what you're going to choose and afterwards you can go to pose mode and you can quite easily adjust um, the poses already Okay, once that's all done, you still need to sort out a few different things like the shoes and then um, the head. So for this particular character, I didn't attach the head into the armature. So I just paired, um, I just parented all of these like brows and um, glasses and the hat um, to the head and uh, just keep them transforming together that's all I did and uh, for the head we're only go to, going to do very simple movement like a bit of tilting a bit of uh, turning around so uh, we can do that in the animation later it doesn't necessarily have to be done through the rigging so that's what I did Now let's try it out, the waist looks correct and the knees and a bit of a stepping motion going on. That is very helpful, the, the thing, the thingy that you use to control the shoes. Um, it's very helpful in terms of uh, stepping forward, stepping backwards, all of these very simple and essential motions. And now it's time to curl up these fingers. And as you can see, <laughs> I tried a few times before I eventually got it. So now it seems like the right hand is holding the, the golf club quite properly now and let's move forward to um, try to change the position of left hand. This is when you were broke and poor. Right, having directors interested in me and people that I respected uh, um, saying you know I like your work or whatever that is. I would say the rigging and, uh, process the is quite intuitive uh, and relatively quite simple to understand um, because um, you have all of these 
conjunction of bones where you can move around is literally just like a human body so it's quite easy to understand and here I tried it a few times and um, uh, I think I got a hand of it after a few try and here basically I think the easier way to do it is probably grab that red little handle there because that's supposed to be the palm and I think that would have been done easier instead of uh, just dragging things around like what I did. But if it's your first time trying uh, rigging, I think it's uh, you, you need to experiment. You need to really um, try to uh, grab around all of these different conjunctions and try to see uh, what, what fits your animation the best. Okay, now the left hand is kind of in position as well. Uh, what we need to do next is to pair the golf club onto the right hand. So the way to do this is to select the golf club and then select the armature, the rigging, and then go into pose mode and uh, make sure that you have the bones selected so in this case we're going to pair the golf club to that little bone in your right hand palm i guess uh so yeah so all you have to do is just set parent to it and choose bone in the in the menu down below and uh voila it's quite simple it's really intuitive Okay, I think that's it for now for the rigging part. Um, at this point, you can basically um, change your character into any pose that you want um, at this moment already. Uh, in the next episode, I'm going to talk about animation and how to rig the character into a uh, slightly more um, complicated uh, movement and more coherent uh, movement for animation as well. So stay tuned for that and I will see you in the next episode.